Hi there. Want to know which scope to try a practical mini rifle with? Keep watching. You might find out. Hello, welcome back to this, our second episode, talking about optics for practical mini rifle. Now the first one, if you remember, there's a link up there probably, was talking about red dots on holographic sites and comparing them. This time we're talking about magnification and optics, specifically for shooting maybe longer distance in the UK. Now, first things first, we're not a reviewing company. Okay, I'm not a rack and load, we do great reviews on, on product. Um, we're here just to simply select a new optics partner for us here. Um, historically, we've shot, I've always shot Vortex, but due to the UK issues in terms of distribution, we can't get hold of it. And so as a result of that, there's no point us shooting and recommending something for our members to try if we can't actually supply them. It's not a major part of our business, but we like to at least supply what we recommend. So we've taken the opportunity to open our eyes a little bit um, and look at the marketplace and see what options are out there for the people shooting practical media rifle uh, away from the Vortex brand, uh, which is obviously quite a common one. Secondly, we don't do sponsorship. I spent most of my working life in motorsport and understand the concept of sponsorship very well. And the bottom line with sponsorship is that there are strings attached. If someone gives me a bit of kit for free, I've got to say nice things about it. If I don't like it, I can't quite say that. So in terms of sponsorship, none of this is sponsorship. We are simply looking at a new optics partner. Our terms this particular review was that we went to the market and said, look, we're changing from Vortex, we're trying something different, what have you got? And we had some good suppliers come through and say, great, here's the options. And the terms are very simple. Lend us the kit, we'll shoot it. If we like it, we'll buy it. If we don't like it, we'll say what we think and send it back. Now, several suppliers refused to go for those terms. We did get three who were quite keen to say, look, stand by the product. And what we've done this time now is test those three in terms of their suitability for practical mini rifle. And then what we're going to do carry on with the videos is showing a comparison red dots at holographic sites and go on from there. And also another test on red dots that we're going to try. Now, one reason we're looking at this is that practical mini rifle in the UK historically has been shot at shorter distances and ranges, mainly because most of our ranges are shorter distance, uh, sometimes up to 25 meters. So for a mini rifle match, it's not exactly accuracy is a big issue. And secondly, um, it's not that hard in terms of the magnification. Even some fairly poor eyeballs wouldn't need to magnify something four or six times at 25 meters. But things are changing. At the moment, this is a <coughs> standard IPSC target. As you can see, pretty big. You put this 25 meters, it's not exactly a tough shot to hit the thing, even hitting the A zone, which is this area here. Uh, however, 100 meters, it's quite a tough shot. One would argue you would want to have magnification, depending on what you like. Majority of targets shot in the UK for mini rifle on the shorter distances ranges are what's called a V's, which is a uh, mini target. Actually, much smaller. A zone's about three and a half inches across. And again, 50, 25, 50 meters. Would you need to have magnified optics to shoot that? Probably not. Does depend on what kind of style of shooting you have, obviously, and your eyesight. But what things are changing now is that the UK PSA and also shooting organisations in the UK have realised that uh, if we want to shoot internationally, IPSC mini rifle is shot up to 120 meters. Now in the UK we can't do that, don't have range long enough to shoot that here at Silverstone with the longest at 100 meters. So they've come up with a new target. This is called the micro target. Um, the, it's obviously smaller, which means all of a sudden your ability to be accuracy, uh, have accurate, be accurate shooting at longer distances does make some sense. Now the idea of this, this target is supposed to simulate the idea of this larger target at 100 meters when placed 25 meters. So all of a sudden, Magnification on the scope may well have a lot more greater validity going further forward as we see competitions start to use more and more of these. Now, in addition to that, we realise that a lot of people haven't shot longer distance in the UK. Uh, and also with the training we do here, we've trained a lot of people how to shoot practical mini rifle and not a huge number have started to compete. So we are launching this month as well what's called the Winter League. It is a monthly series of competitions, six in total, starting in October, where there'll be four courses of fire. Turn up and shoot, no booking required. And there will be at least one course of fire at 100 metres, one course at 80 metres, and two shorter. The idea is twofold, really. A, for those people new to shooting, try it out. Four courses of fire, a bit less intensive than the 12 stage level three. But also for the existing competitors who don't get a chance to shoot at more than 25, 50 metres on the home range, it's a chance to practice. You know, dial in your zeros, see what kind of scope suits you best at longer distances. And when the competitions start next season, where a lot more micro targets will be used, a better place to start competing straight away. So those two things are helpful. But in terms of our scope, our scope test, we had three suppliers 
who agreed to our terms, which is you know no strings attached, try them. Um, and we test them this time all against the Vortex that I shot before. And also we test it back to back with the EOTAC and the Aimpoint Red Dot to see a comparison. Now, in terms of the testing, what we did is we put together a course of fire that gave targets from three meters to a hundred meters. And what I did was I shot it multiple times with multiple optics over and over again against the clock. Um, sometimes I shot the whole thing freehand, sometimes I shot the longer distance with one hand supported. We mix it up, the target stayed the same. And what we did is we recorded the accuracy of the shots from each optic that I shot and measured it against the clock. It was three days with the solid shooting pretty much. We shot every optic, you know, six, seven times, back and forth on different guns. I have a pair of race guns that are identical, so we swapped them back and forth. And also at a third gun, we tried some stuff out as well. So quite a lot of data was taken. Something like 11 hours of footage was shot which fortunately we've ended down to about 10-15 minutes now, to come up with a conclusion. Now the three ones we tried, there were three in total, we had first of all, uh, we had ones from Hawk. Now this is a Hawk. Uh, it's a tactical scope with their tactical reticle, which is slightly different. Uh, there'll be details on the bottom of the video in terms of prices and exact model numbers, etc. Um, but this one we, we tried really because we're quite impressed with the quality of it in terms of the scope itself and also the cost effectiveness. It wasn't hugely expensive. In terms of specifics about it, a couple of things we liked about it. Build quality is very good. Secondly, cap turrets. Now this doesn't sound like a big deal, but having the ability to adjust your, your um, elevation and your windage and then put the cap back on that can't be adjusted it's actually quite a big deal i've actually knocked out mine by just putting it in the bag and just quickly hit the, the elevation on it and knocked me out of competition didn't realize so there's no time to re-zero in competitions so we liked it for that uh, but the most important thing we found for the hawk was a reticle type it's a nice round tactical reticle with a dot in the center and crosshairs all round and it worked very well to frame the target um, which is really useful for getting on target quite quickly so that performed really quite well in comparison to the hawk we also had the Voodoo scope, which is made by Yetek as their new brand. And this was slightly different in as much that it's a first focal plane sight. So I mean, as you zoomed in and out on the magnification, the reticle they had got bigger and larger. Now, my hope for this was that having that kind of reticle moving back and forth would enable me to set up a holdover, to have 100 meter, 50 meter, and 10 meter holes on the same reticle and not adjust the scope. So I could literally hold on the target on different points on the reticle. Now, the concept's still good, I think, um, but we couldn't quite get to work on this particular scope because when you zoomed in, you've got a lovely clear crosshairs in the center. When you zoomed out, it faded to the point you couldn't see it at all. So you ended up with a, with a halfway house. You know, once backed out, you had a nice uh, frame shot of the target with the outer reticle, but no crosshairs or dot to look at. And then you zoomed in and all of a sudden you had the crosshairs. Now, we tried different adjustments on this one. It may all be this particular scope was a bit of a paint, but the concept, I think, is still quite valid. It just needs a bit of fine-tune to get the reticle uh, illumination right. Other than that, it was very well built, so quite a hot, solid scope. Didn't have uh, cap turrets, which is a slight concern, but the adjustments were nice and strong and the clicks quite clear. Um, and it felt very solid, had a matte finish compared to others, which looked quite cool as well. Um, we liked it, but needed a bit of an adjustment for it. The last one we tried, which is... <laughs> Currently fitted this funky looking gun here, which is we have a, a bit of a rabbit issue here at Silverstone at the moment So we've created a little rabbit gun little short barrel thing with lights on to shoot But this one has the hawk fitted which we started off in the testing We tried to carry on using it for uh, shorter distance rabbiting, etc. Now the hawk is a very well-known brand um, And very very impressive quality glass it wasn't the cheapest one to test again All the prices would be below and the model numbers what we found with this one particularly was that the quality of glass was so good it was so clear, it's so clear that it was lovely to shoot. Um, again, cap turrets. Again, nice progressive clicks on the system, which is very nice and very good quality in terms of build. Um, but here's where it came down to be an issue. We've come to the conclusion really that it's not really magnification or the quality of the glass which is crucial for shooting practical mini rifle. It's a type of reticle. Now again, it's a very personal choice. It's my choice, there's no right or wrong in shooting, whichever suits you perfectly. But the Hawk, for example, had a very classic, normal crosshair. Great for rabbiting, really, really perfect for that. But in terms of picking up targets, it wasn't quite as fast on the eye to be able to pick up a target, zoom in on the zone you want to shoot at, and then go from there. Uh, the Vortex has a round uh, reticle with a dot in the center, and that's what Hawk have done with theirs. It's a nice round semicircle inside the dot with a cross all round. 
And what that enabled us to do, very similar with the EOTech on the holographic site, was to pick up on the target, frame the target in the reticle, and get quickly onto target, and ideally you know, get your couple of alpha shots from it. Now, the thing about practical shooting is you're not looking about actually down to an inch, you're looking down to four or five inches. Yeah, so we're not talking about knocking the eye out of a rabbit, we're talking about getting on the alpha area, which when you know where the targets are positioned, it's a question of getting center mass onto it and working very well. So in terms of testing, with the multiple courses of fire we tried, three meters to a hundred meters, and we tried all different kinds, etc. It came down to the fact that <coughs> really the Hawk and the EOTech performed the best as the test in terms of timing and in terms of scores. And we scored everything. Every single shot was scored, marked on the targets, and ditto in terms of timing, etc. The best time I got was 9.62 for five targets, two shots in each shooting on freehand. And what we found was the ones where you are uh, zoomed right in, your accuracy was a little bit higher, but your time was slower, which is not exactly rocket science. You imagine it takes more time to zoom in the picture. And I tried the scopes, the Orc especially, both zoomed in and zoomed out in different processes. And the same conclusion was is that the picking up on the target on the reticle time really was very useful. And being zoomed in gave you more accuracy. But if you had a course of fire with your mix between five and 100 meters, it was more of an adjustment for your brain to understand going in from zooming in to zooming out. Now, there's no time to adjust your scope. You've got to set a position and hold it. And also what you found, the shorter distance stuff, the time to get on target with a EOTech or the red dot from aim point was much faster. Bang on straight away. Both eyes open, you pick up the target faster, you shoot. In the, the day, human beings are binocular in nature with their eyes. Both eyes open means you have better depth perception. By closing one eye as you zoom in on zoomed in scope, you lose a depth perception to some extent. It takes longer to get on target at shorter distances. So is there a, a right or wrong? No. Um, is there a particular favorite what we have here in terms of scopes tested? Yes. Uh, we love the Hawk, um, cost effective, nice reticle type, good quality glass and well made. Uh, we love the Kite uh, because the glass is just such a wonderful quality and as a result of that we've picked it up and using it on one of our different guns. But the reticle type wasn't suitable for practical, for me personally anyway. And we also went back to the holographic side and the aim point on the dot side. And I've come to the conclusion of what I'm going to try shooting now is I'm going to try a combination, this is my number one race gun, of the EOTech as a primary and then my aim point red dot as a secondary. The aim point will now be zero at three meters, so literally right in front of me. And that's what we use for is that quick sight acquisition, bang targets out very quick. We get a lot of course of fire where literally the buzzer go off and you've got four targets right in front of you. And I'm going to use the ear attack and I'm going to use it up to 100 meters. No magnification. Magnifier doesn't work, as far as I'm concerned, in comparison to what we're doing. And I'm going to use this because I found that getting on target quickly was better with a reticle. Uh, that I could shoot both eyes open. And I just took my time on actually pulling the trigger. Whereas with a scope, you get on target faster and you end up rushing the shot from there. So I'm trying this in competition form now. Um, and I'm also gonna carry on shooting with now the Hawk on longer distance stuff in comparison between the two of them, um, which I think will work quite nicely. I think there's still miles to be made out of the Voodoo side with the Cipher so focal plane. Um, there's a validity to that concept, but it just needs work in terms of conceptually. Um, and also, you know, we're going <laughs> to actually buy the Hawk glass to go on some of our longer distance rifles because they're, they're very good, but the reticle doesn't suit. Um, also, last thing we did, we tried these. These are Samson mounts. So, <clears throat> it's a, one of their quick release mounts. Um, and as you can see, it's a quite a nice bit of kit. What I found was it. It's not that tight on, although it's rigidly on the gun, it doesn't feel very tight, which is quite nice, because I can swap over from scope to scope. Very well engineered, grip the scopes all very particularly well without damaging them. So we're gonna look at some different options in terms of, in terms of scope mounts now. Uh, primarily, obviously, you need to have an offset mount, really, with these kind of guns. So that was it, so we're going with Hawk and Kite. There you go, in terms of scope-wise, both for the practical side. Um, there is no right or wrong what to go for. Personally, I'm gonna try with the ear taken and the red dot aim point initially. We're now gonna test different red dots now because everyone knows the aim point's quite expensive. It looks in different comparison to dots and see how they compare. And also different mounting positions. Um, ditto in terms of different offset mounts, things we're gonna try as well. So, uh, hope you enjoyed that. Any comments, please do uh, let us know. Um, we need to have a, always hit subscribe and that kind of stuff to get more of it. But the intention for here is hopefully it's useful for you to look at the opportunities. Again, the good thing they're doing is go to a gun show 
um, and and look. You know, there's a target shooting show coming up in November. Go and have a look through these scopes. The reticle choice is the crucial thing for me, rather than the quality of the glass. Um, and then warranties. You know, all these scopes all had lifetime warranties on them. Um, you know, they were very, very straightforward in terms. Of if it broke, you get a new one. So that's one thing to consider as well. Uh, there are prices and details and links below where they get more from. We will start to stock and sell both Kite and Hawk here, uh, but uh, anyone can sell them. Uh, Bournemouth's going to have a go. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Happy shooting. I uh, hope to talk to you soon. Cheers.